I'm JD the Media Jack, and this is the Flipside Podcast, episode 463. Two different guests today. Later on, we're going to hear from October Poppy, a radio personality as well as a singer songwriter who just last year was about to launch into a great celebration of some great new songs. And then, of course, everything ground to a halt. But don't fret, she's got some great news to share with us, as well as a track that was released today, June 24th. We're going to hear from October Poppy in a little bit. First, Allison Ann, a bodybuilder as well as a singer-songwriter and wonderful energy in this world who had an incredible journey during the pandemic. She received some backlash, but that backlash, of course, like most backlash, unwarranted. I'll let her tell her story in a little bit. First of all, big thank you to everyone who has signed up for my Patreon. The Media Jack is on Patreon. And we have our first executive producer. So I'd like to give a big thanks and shout out to... Red Wolf Dawn. Dawn signed up for the top tier of the Patreon for the Media Jack, which gives her a credit on every episode. Now, this is Allison Ann, the bikini bodybuilder, on the Flipside Podcast. I'm an architectural technologist. That's my, like, 9 to 5, Monday to Friday job. Um, And I've been doing that for seven years now. Holy, that is a long time. (laughs) Yeah, and... uh, (laughs) And I actually like also just started coaching about a year and a half ago. And that's like on top of that. So uh, doing like bodybuilding coaching and posing coaching. It started with posing coaching and then it melded into bodybuilding coaching. Um, And then how long I've been bodybuilding. So I have officially like I had signed up with a coach literally just under five years ago now. Um, So that's how long I've been taking it that seriously. And then for the two years before that, I was taking it pretty seriously. Like I had bought books and read articles online and sort of was doing everything I could, like knowing that I wanted to compete potentially one day or like I just just sort of obsessed with obsessed with it for a long time. But I've been training since I was 15 on and off like university was a bit of a wash. But yeah. Well, in in a last conversation, the way you put it was uh, someone had approached you with the concept of, hey, if you just eat vegetables, chicken and rice and lift a bunch of heavy weights, you could actually be in this world. And you went, yeah, I think it was chicken and yam, chicken and yam. That's right. Yeah. And they're like, yeah, we just put cinnamon on it. I was like, that's really weird. Like, (laughs) Like couldn't picture what eating chicken and yam. What? Like with cinnamon? I'm like, what? Like, that sounds weird, but that makes you fit? Like, okay. <laughs> a long time ago. Like, I knew it was healthy food, but I'm like, that's like, that's it? That's like the magic formula to doing a competition? But yeah, basically, like, i known I'd want to do it. Like, I had known about bodybuilding um, for a long time, but like, I think I mentioned in the last podcast, I thought bodybuilding, like, happened in Hollywood only, or like, in LA, or like, you know, like, move is like movie stars because i only saw bodybuilders in magazines and so i'm like from a small town and this is before social media before and it's not mainstream you don't see it on tv like other than arnold schwarzenegger so i just didn't know it was a thing and um like that anyone could do and then i heard this girl say oh i did a bodybuilding show and i was like what that's a thing (laughs) pictures and i was like i'm doing that i want to do that and I'd never, and I never saw her again. Um, so it's still just like, what is this elusive world? Like, it was like a glimpse of like, yeah. <laughs> I was still in university. And then when I finished university, like, that's when I was like, really getting super into training. And I, had, again, like bought books on training. Um, and was just like doing my own programs. And I was writing it down, logging it, looking at my food, learning about macros. And then yeah, I met someone who did a show and was like, hey, let's go for coffee. I'll tell you everything about it. And then, yeah, I signed up with my coach like a week later. Wow. Oh, yeah. it, it really is just like the, the world just like, go this way. <laughs> yeah. And then with COVID, it was like, don't go this way. And then I was like, no, I'm staying. <laughs> yeah. Well, you you made a lot of changes within this past calendar year. Uh, one of the big changes is uh, you moved and like drastically improved and just just went all out on making these incredible and life-changing positive decisions congratulations thank you yeah the move was great so i'm from vancouver island originally um which is just like near vancouver and people Mm -hmm. are like 
well, that's so cool. You're from an island. Like, do you have a boat? And I'm like, well, that's like, <laughs> I mean, yeah. Like my dad like builds them as a hobby, like little like rowboats or speedboats or whatever. Um, but that's not the norm. It's like a very large island. Like you can really know you're on an island. We have um, cars here. Yeah. <laughs> we have lots. But yeah, so I mo- I grew up on the island though. It's definitely like grew up out in the middle of the woods, near farms, near the ocean, mountains, the whole thing. Like I just love being outdoors. Um, and I moved to Vancouver for university. Yeah, I guess. 10 something years ago now and uh and then stayed because i studied architecture so obviously like if you're designing buildings and you know like doing architecture like you need to be in a city um and then with covid happening i ended up starting for a new firm and the week that everything shut down was the week that i was meant to start and i was like are you can you still um like hire me or what because i just kind of quit my job And they were like, yeah, no problem. So I started from home. Mm -hmm. Um, They gave me a laptop and I was working from home. And after a couple, like two months, I'm like, can I just, or a month even, I'm like, can I go to the island? Because I'm like stuck in this tiny apartment with no balcony and it's hot. And there was like a long nothingness ahead of us. Like the world was so unknown. So I just went to my parents on the island and I stayed with them. We like, they live out in the forest and... And after six months, I just said to work, like, can I, um, can I stay? Because I don't really think I can come back. And it was my (laughs) And, uh, they were like, oh, yeah, no problem. It's been great. And I was like, oh, thank God, because I bought a house. Like, (laughs) (laughs) Like, I was like, fully had made up my mind that I would have to figure it out, like, how to stay here and work and stuff. But luckily, like, it's just been continuing with me working for them, which is amazing. It's, it's a really good firm. So it's a lot of work, which is a whole different topic but it's good what's 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 the phrase it's it's easier to beg for forgiveness than ask permission (laughs) it's actually yeah i've read that several times lately you uh, again like during the absolute mayhem that was COVID 19 or still is COVID 19 you made this incredible decision for yourself that uh essentially needed to be done with everything that's been happening uh, COVID and lockdowns and and stuck in your places of of residence and, and working from home and people losing their jobs. A lot of focus has been uh, put on a spotlight has been put on mental health and like a lot of your decisions moving in with your parents, getting out of that humid, sweaty, sweltering heat box known as an apartment. Uh, and, and in buying a home in a place that you're more comfortable, I mean, like, that is all healthy. It, it's drastic, but it, for you, and this is something that you touched on, on on your social media, like, for you, it was important. And mental health is very important. If you're not right up here, nothing else matters. And I think, like, it just comes with, living in a smaller city or a smaller town like less stress and less hustle and less like go 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 which is like a huge impact on your mental health honestly when you only have so many hours in the day and your schedule is full like every year people are like what's your new year's resolution I'm like an empty calendar like I just I just want time like to do nothing and so like moving here that was a big part of that so like it's been amazing to just take more time to do less. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, and it's just, it just seems more possible here. It's just a bit of a slower pace in a way. Like I'm not commuting um, to work, right. even if it's like a shorter, like at all, I work from home. Like it's amazing. Like that is time in my day that I get back. And I think about all the times in in all the previous jobs I had, like I remember commuting like an hour and a half each way, like three hours of my day. And I would read books or listen to podcasts or like I would use it as like self-improvement time, but it's not the same. Like you're surrounded by strangers and you're, I don't know, hot or cold or it's raining or you're like, I don't know, stuck in a subway Mm. car with somebody. And like now that I work from home, like I don't have commute. So that's time that I get back for myself. So yeah. that's huge that's like huge for the mental health as well, well as just being close to nature yeah 
Uh, there was like, of of course, I follow you on social media. Uh, there was a time there where you you blatantly came out and said, "Like, look, I'm taking a step away," and you needed to just focus on you and get away from the the actual like busyness that is social media and the necessity, or at least the feel of necessity, to constantly have content. And oh, like, that's huge. It is massive. It like it's anxiety inducing. It's like I have to put out something today, and it's like it, it's it's interesting how people sometimes will just get to a point where they just burn out. Whereas like I don't know if you were close to it or if you reached it or if you were recognizing the signs. I mean, you're you're not afraid to just step away because social media uh, is is like what I use it for, it's a tool. It is not a lifestyle. It is a tool. Yeah, I, I agree. It's it's a, like an amazing tool as well. And like certainly who you choose to follow and the content you choose to ingest yeah. really like does make an impact. And you can like curate your feed to help improve you. And I think yeah. that's something that I really like took time to do as well. Um, and yeah, I have like completely burned out from social media in the past and I have like totally taken breaks. Um, and like, I just remember I did a few shows in a row and there's, there, there's constant posting on social media and there's also constant engagement. Um, and it's just a lot and you just feel this like pressure to keep it up. Um, and so now I just remember like hitting this point, I don't know, this was quite some time ago where I was like, I'm just gonna post for me like I am who I am so I just need to post what I want and if I don't feel like posting then I'm not going to post it I still take just as many photos like thinking about posting them so yeah. like it's not like my camera roll has gotten any less like cluttered but I just if I feel like this urgent need to post than I do and it's not even like a need but a lot of times I'm just super inspired by like a thought and I'm like okay I gotta get it out there and like get the post out <laughs> in like two minutes and then other times I'll sit there and overthink and overthink and overthink and then I'll be like mm, just put the phone away <laughs> <laughs> it's the way to do it right yeah 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 um but yeah like the social media and like the impact on the mental health and the burnout from it is is really big I think if you just like let it consume you and i i really really am a strong believer that it's like the type of content that you're ingesting is like the biggest impact like for me it is um like if i go to my explore page you know you click on the little like search bubble and, and it just or the for you page or whatever it's called and it shows you the content that you, that the algorithm thinks you're interested in i just remember looking at it like i don't know maybe about a year ago or something and i'm like what is all this garbage like what is this page um, and so then I had somebody had mentioned like, oh yeah, I've made sure that mine only shows me X, Y, Z. And I was like, how? And they're like, oh, you like, you give the type of posts that you're interested in more attention and you, on every time, like you're scrolling your feed and an account comes up and you're like, A, who is that? Or B, like, oh, mm, if you like find yourself like always scrolling past that account, cause it doesn't like align with you, then yeah. you unfold it and eventually like the algorithm picks up so now my for you page is all like you know motivational quotes or um like super inspiring like like people or stories mm -hmm. or traveling like you know pictures of mountains or like things that actually like like matter to me yeah um and so if i'm ever like on even on my home page or on my explore page or anything on social media now like i i find that like ninety nine percent of what's on there now is stuff that like I'm really inspired and motivated by. So if I am mindlessly scrolling, like my brain is always thinking about positive things now. Yeah. Um, which has really just helped like take away from the comparison game as well. And the, and, and the, I think the more you're on social media, the more that you see that like so much of it is not real. Um, oh yeah. <laughs> and you don't have to like judge other people for thinking like for posting something that you think is fake or anything but it's it's more so that you just recognize it for what it is um yeah you're you're seeing the absolute best choice of a of a video or a photo possibly with a filter maybe even at some extreme levels some touch up you're not seeing the nine thousand other photos that never will see the light of day or yeah 
the bad day that the person had, you know, that day or the day before or the trauma or the stress that they're dealing with. You're seeing what people want you to see when it comes to social media. That that's, yeah. that's Instagram, that's Twitter, that's TikTok, that's that's even YouTube. Yeah, it's so it's true. And be well, because I'm a bodybuilder and because a lot of like my content is bodybuilding related, like I've seen like touched up photos where you yeah. can see the background is warped like, the waist. Yeah, <laughs> like no, like fully like it would be like these straight lines behind me are like swirled in at the <laughs> like which I mean, there are people out there that like, um, because I've worked with a lot of photographers and there are people out there that ask like, hey, could you like do some photo editing? And I'm the exact opposite. Like when I work with a photographer, um, I specifically say like, hey, like if like there's a hair across my face and you need to like remove it or I don't know, like a fly lands on my shoulder, I can yeah. try to give an example or whatever, spoon my teeth, like go ahead, remove it. Yeah. Um I was doing some headshots once and I had this like massive pimple and I was like, can you just remove that like one pimple please? And they did. And it was like pretty harmless because I was getting actual headshots done. Yeah. Um, but I specifically have told photographers like, please don't actually edit my body at all. Like the shape. Um, it's really important that I like portray like an actual like body that I have as a bodybuilder. Um, and you see it a lot. Like you'll scroll photos and you'll see, like a perfectly beautiful human being that's like edited their their photos and yeah um you would be able to recognize them in person because they look completely different yeah and and you know what though that's their um prerogative like it's it's hard there's a lot to unpack there like their their emotional side of it and where they are and their relationship with their body maybe they didn't even know that the photo was like touched up um like I got photos back from a photographer and I was like, wow, my waist looks really small. And I had to ask them to send me them back without them edited when I realized that they were. So that really? I could them. And, but like, even though um, they, they, cause some photographers just do it anyway, cause that's just the style that they're used to shooting or, or they're like used to having that request or that's just the way that they edit or I don't know. So, and I noticed it and I had to ask for it to not be so like you, you got to think too, like, honestly, like there might be people out there that post those photos that don't even realize the photographer edited it for them, which is just so prevalent in like the fitness industry. And I'm like, hello, you literally have like the fittest humans on this planet with like a body that like 1% of people can achieve and that's not good enough for you. (laughs) And you still have to go and edit it to your liking. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, (laughs) sorry, what? Like yeah. these are like elite athletes. How is their <laughs> like an unacceptable? Like I don't understand. Yeah. Like, would you do that to a pole vaulter at the Olympics? Like, I don't God. really. Like, like that's just. I'm like, no, you wouldn't. Or like, yeah. what about like a power lifter like at the Olympics, like squatting? No. So mm. why are you doing it to a bodybuilder? Their their physique is literally like a result of the sport. Like. So don't change it. I don't know. So so there's a lot to unpack and like why photos are unedited. Like maybe the person wanted it and that's one thing, like their emotional feeling of wanting their photo edited. Maybe they didn't even know. So yeah. what's going on in the photographer's head? Like maybe it'll sell them more photos or maybe the person they're selling the photo to asked for it. Like it's, it's really like just ingrained in the bodybuilding community, unfortunately. I'm glad that it's out there and I'm glad people talk about it all the time. And you have lots of girls now, um, girls, guys, humans, um, people that uh, will post like, you know, those Instagram in real life and they'll fully show off their like, their cellulite or their stretch marks or something. And I'm like, yes, good. Like I still want to gain more confidence in that area as well. So yeah. yeah. Well, you, you have an incredible amount of, confidence as well as energy as well as uh kosh to throw into the wind in way before COVID 19 uh really started to get its grip on this world you did something uh dare i say spontaneous because no one knew about it until it already happened (laughs) you went and competed in an event in and it was an absolute whirlwind. Yeah. Wow. Well, okay. So 
prep for me, like my emotional attachment to prep is something that like really like I did address a lot like in in that whole process and when it was done. And part of me thinks like, you know, I probably could have gotten away with not doing it. But on the other hand, like what bodybuilding gives me and the structure it gives my life, like like I literally am, it's like I feel quite dependent on the sport and but I I mean that in a healthy way like um because of what it's done for me that's positive like it's taken me away from alcohol it's taken me away from um my eating disorder it's taken me away from like a lot of just negative yeah negative like spiral mindset of 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 have it like not knowing what to focus on or what to do like bodybuilding has done nothing but make me like healthier happier motivated confident and all like and it's funny because I'm a bodybuilder basically like full time 365 days a year when I go through hardships and they're bodybuilding related um some people are like oh it's the sport it's so hard and you need to take a break or like I don't mean to me like anyone in bodybuilding will hear that Mm. and I'm like hey like you should have seen me before I had bodybuilding like I was a fucking mess like (laughs) you kidding me like you know me back then because like I don't even know that girl okay (laughs) so like it's I'm like very much like I I feel like sometimes I need it if I am going through a hard time and with COVID like it was tough like not only did I quit like literally when the pandemic started, I had quit my job that I was at for almost three years. So that's a huge life change. And then I moved back home to the island after 10 years. That's a huge life change. And then I bought a house. That's a huge life change. And so like, I don't know, I just, I like need that focus and that drive to be in a show. And so I was going to do the Ben Weeder. It's a natural pro qualifier in Canada. And then it was canceled. So like two weeks out and I was like, you know what? Like I, saved all the money for the show I have enough to go to Florida and and keep in mind this is while travel was still open there was no mandatory there was a mandatory quarantine but there's no like hotel quarantine there was no um I don't even think there were like vaccines yet or anything so this was like well before it seemed to get like really 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 strict um and lots of people not lots but I mean people were still traveling at that time and I, I just followed all of the protocols to a T um I just remember I said if I'm gonna go like my mom was worried she's like oh no like I'm really worried about you traveling and I like promised my mom I'm like okay if I travel I promise I will follow like every protocol like to the absolute like nth degree um like I didn't even go out after my show like interact with people backstage or anything I just like kept my distance but I honestly like I was going for me at that point like like the show was like like for me like I, I needed it like like last year so it was tough and I'm I'm glad you said that I come across as really confident and everything um like we obviously all have our own like internal struggles so um like for me I like really need that focus yeah of what prep and bodybuilding in general gives me yeah you uh you 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 did the competition which Mm -hmm. was again an absolute utter incredible feat but then you came home and then you revealed to everyone in your world in your following and whatever like this is what i did ha ha and yeah. and then you immediately went into explanation mode not defense mode not the attack attack mode but you you went and you said like this is what i did yeah i, I went i went from the airport to the hotel i went from the hotel to the stage i went from the stage back to the hotel i didn't interact with anyone i didn't do anything uh i wouldn't and I, I didn't i didn't go to any social gatherings and you even said i think something along the lines of like i didn't feel like doing it anyway i'm an introvert so i was perfectly happy with just chilling in my hotel until the flight was ready to go seriously though like i am an introvert at shows um i the most horrible show experience I ever had was a local show. It was like the Van Pro Show 2018. And I love all of my family and friends that came. Like I can't, it means so much, but I literally had like 20 people come and that is so much energy. Like on show day, like you're, you're supposed to be doing nothing but like chilling out, getting in the zone, like, you know, make a few, like chat with a few people, like, you know, Mm -hmm. 
up. But like for me, I just want to chill out, like headphones on or just like ignore people. I don't know. <laughs> like I just got to like get in my zone. I remember that 2018 like band pro and I had like 20 people come to visit me. And to think that even if I spend like 10 minutes with each person, that's like two and a half hours of visiting. Yeah. Like it was exhausting. And you're like, <laughs> the time and like talking and it's just like, oh my God, it's so good to see you. Oh my God, it's so good to see you. And like, yeah. it, was, it was stressful. So yeah, like I'm, I love the whole going to a show alone. So, <laughs> so much. Because I did the Toronto nat- Natural Nationals yeah. um, in, no, that was 20, yeah, that was 2019. And I went alone and it was so nice. I'm like, I have a hotel room by myself. I can just chill here and like do whatever I want and put my stuff wherever I want and not have to <laughs> anyone else's like, like, st- like stuff in my hotel room. And I just get to chill here. The hotel is attached to the venue. And I was like, this is great. So like, um, I wanted to go to Olympia alone. Like, <laughs> this, seriously, this a it's like scenario for best. You. It's so yeah. good. Oh, she's have naps. Like, you get to work out. Like, yeah, it's good. So, yeah, I did. I did feel like I had to explain myself a little bit. Like, some people, like, I got a comment that was like, "How could you go when um, the world is in chaos?" Yeah. The well, yeah, and it. I don't know, like, how do you explain, I'd have to go back and read what I wrote, but, but basically somebody was like, well, how could you even go and travel when, like, I'm not allowed to go see my granny, and I was like, or my grandma or something, and I'm like, to be fair, like, I am not allowed to go visit my granny either, and I have, like, cried about it repeatedly, um, like, I've luckily been able to go in and actually give her a hug about a month ago, for the first, like, since the pandemic, and I, like, was so grateful, um, but I was, I was really, really, really upset at that comment. And I just felt like saying like, I'm literally watching my granny like die through a window. Like, I'm sorry if that's dark to put on here, but like, I just felt like a little, I'm like, how is me going and following all the protocols and literally not interacting with a single human? Like, and I, I didn't get it sick. So I don't know. I, I get it. Like, we don't the, the- really get in the whole like. COVID or not, but, um, I the, just, the, the, sorry, I, I, I'll get, I'll give you a moment to breathe. Yeah. Uh, I, I do remember you responding to that and basically like, I do remember that comment and actually you and I had a conversation, uh, yeah. uh about that and you were rather upset about it, but yeah. you explained it perfectly is the fact that, okay, you know, like, yes, we are all social distancing. We cannot be with our loved ones. We cannot be with anyone outside of our bubble, but yeah. No one has stopped that person from going to the grocery store or no one has stopped that person from going to wherever as long as you follow strict protocols. You weren't going to go visit family. You went somewhere you were allowed to go and you followed every single protocol to a T. You were by yourself. You isolated because you wanted to and you knew you had to and it was a smart thing to do. And then you came back home and you interacted with no one. So no, I actually like slept in my car. Yes. Uh, in between yes. The, in between the flight and getting home because I wasn't gonna make it home. And I'm like, yes. well, I can't go to a hotel. I'm supposed to be quarantining. So I slept in the back of my car and I like but picture like a tanned, scrawny, like post-show competitor with a car full of treats and I'm sleeping in it. I'm like, don't eat all the snacks. Like, <laughs> we're gonna throw up on the side of the road. Like seriously, it was pretty funny. Anyway, basically like I just remember um, like of that feeling of like wanting to explain myself. It, it wasn't, I wasn't angry. Like I knew that people would be concerned and like, and I know like bodybuilding is like a selfish sport, like absolutely. And it's a very like privileged sport. Um, but you have to think like there are a million and one things that that pr- other like privileged people that have the like that have the privilege to follow a hobby or a passion like choose to do like it no matter what it is right and I'm like for me like I like my one of my like personal quotes is literally like bodybuilding saved my life like it really did from so many things like for an ex like alcoholic with an eating disorder and like severe like PTSD and anxiety and like depression like bodybuilding is the one thing that gives me like the most hope in the world and like self-belief and like excitement and confidence and like 
I try to give back to the community as much as I feel like I get out of it, um, which is a lot. And so for me, like to step on stage and to complete a prep, like really means a lot to me. And I know that that's coming from like this, again, it's a selfish sport and it's a privileged sport. So like I'm super like aware of that. And so that was really what I wanted to relate to people. Like, yes, I understand, but like you have to understand what this means to me and what my life is without it. Like yeah. that we could get into the whole, like even that one month that the gym was closed last year, like that April was, I can't imagine the people that had the gym closed for like eight months. And then this year in February, I went through another like bout of depression because of again, bodybuilding in the state of the world. And so, yeah. yeah. No, I, 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 I get how tough that can be. Um, <clears throat> I, I find myself fortunate, like very, very insanely fortunate that my career, uh, was not interrupted. It was, it was definitely disrupted. It was definitely changed and it still has changed, but I consider myself fortunate that my routine has not changed. Um, and I like, again, like I'm fortunate other people, not so much. And people who are used to routine, who are used to, um, doing something that is either their passion or their, their career or their lifestyle. And to be stuck in a situation where it's like, you can't do that right now. And then not have any sort of finish line in place. I mean, that's devastating because you're taking away someone's being, you're taking away someone's yeah. passion and yeah. it's, it is, like I said, it's, it's devastating, right? It is one thing, one thing to be said, like, Hey, do you want to go and travel? Nah, I don't really feel like it. And another thing for, Hey, you're not allowed to travel. And you go, well, what if I wanted to? It, having that choice taken away from you ha can have massive negative effects. It can. Traveling is a whole nother thing. I yeah, miss that. No, but it's true. Like when, when the thing you love is like unavailable to you, it's yeah. hard. It makes you question like, who am I without it? So, yeah. um, yeah. yeah. And I, unfortunately, well, not unfortunately or fortunately, either way, whatever. I feel like I already know who I am without, without bodybuilding. And like, luckily all the growth that I've gotten from it, like certainly who I am now, like after my years of my bodybuilding experience, it's not like bodybuilding's gone and I'm going back to this person, but it certainly makes it harder to not have that thing that you love. Like, yeah. like I go to the gym every day. I'm, I'm grateful my gym is open right now, but I literally go every day and I like, I'm like upset when I have to leave because I, <laughs> so much like it's it's like my place like i'm like yeah every single moment i'm in there like it's like i feel like every second is a second that i like improve or get better in some way so yeah well something else that you you're passionate about and something you've been growing uh for the past little while is uh you started to get yourself a, a few of these and some equipment and all that other wonderful stuff yeah it's, it's sort of set up so you can see the that's there's my ring light. Yeah. I don't know if you're gonna be able to see it. Uh, I, I I recognize some of that material. Yeah. <laughs> but I've got my headphones. I've got my like isolation. I've got my mic stand. My isolation like sound like capture thing. Um, this time I was yeah. not caught off guard. Last time I interviewed you and we had a conversation. You were like, "Oh yeah, I'm also a singer. Oh yeah, I'm also a burlesque dancer." No, this time I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I have um, yet to like actually record uh, any like actual music yet. But like I've been songwriting like crazy. So yeah, I've been songwriting for half my life now, I guess. So, and I've always wanted to do something with it. Like I wanted to be a singer when I was 19. I went to music, like business conferences and I wrote songs with other um, like artists and I like was writing every day and playing piano every day. And I just remember my mom and my dad were like, oh, but like university. And I was like, well, yeah, okay. So I went to university and it just sort of like, but I always play music and I always sang in the background and I always kind of wished like, I wish I just did it. And now um, I am working on an album. And so I have all the songs written and I'm just finishing up writing. Like r when I write, I just sing like the melody and then mm -hmm. I 
like record it into my phone and I write down the lyrics and then and then I learn the piano to it so I have to like try and find piano that fits which is interesting um I don't know how other people write but that's how I write um so I've I've written all the songs and then now I'm just adding the piano to it and I'm actually going to be within the next month me and my friend who's also a singer songwriter her name's Joey Clarkson um she's going to be coaching me through how to actually like use all my recording equipment and record the the vocals and then I'll work with a producer who's actually in the UK and um he will just help me like instrument like add instruments and based on like how I want them to sound and that's gonna be cool so I'll probably do my own piano recording too obviously because I play piano so that's so cool. I, like I, it, it, it really makes me feel happy whenever someone's like, I've, I've had this dream for a while. I've had this passion for a while and I'm finally going to start digging into it. It's, it's awesome to see and it's awesome to hear. It's really cool. Like music for me is like a little bit of like an alter ego, um, too. Like my, the songs that I write are usually like kind of about my past to be honest or like mm. who I was in my past like it was a it was really impactful like I'm not you wouldn't really know like looking at me growing up like I was always like super bubbly and everything on the outside but like I had a really hard like I really struggled with um internally with a lot of things and a lot of demons um like growing up so when I when I write music which is why actually like I've gone with my stage name from bur my burlesque name like for my music um so luna eclipse um mm -hmm. so a big reason like why i've gone with a different name is because it's almost like that person i am when i'm singing is like the old version of me like when i grew up with like a lot of like darkness inside of me and just like knowing like deep inside that like life was like meant to be beautiful but I like never I couldn't feel it mm. so it's almost like that persona was like just somebody else entirely like right. Allison that like was shown to the world was like oh, okay like oh you know happy or bubbly or whatever but like inside of me like I was just I was really like dealing with lots of demons that actually like understood them on like such a dark level and um like it just sort of felt more like my my true self like mm. what i was going through inside my head every day was not necessarily what people on the outside saw so yeah yeah just so i've always sort of felt like disconnected from like my external appearance and uh name and identity and everything so like yeah anyway <laughs> i'm I, very excited I, i'm super excited to like put like the music out there um, so I don't even care if I'm like, if, if like my mom buys like a CD or an album or whatever, I'd be like, yeah, like I'm doing it like <laughs> that literally entirely for myself just to finally feel like I'm going to like let all those stories out and like yeah. really like understand that part of me. Yeah, no. And that's like the best reason to do it, it doing it for yourself, doing it for your own, uh, expression and doing it for your own just process of going through and digging up and then finally letting go and sharing with the world stuff that you have been holding in or experienced or anything like that that is like musicians have literally built their careers on just this thing <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, it, and it like it shows up for a lot of people in a lot of different ways yeah. um like some people it's with art or some people it's with cooking or reading or writing or, um, and even in bodybuilding, like I, like I've actually had some like pretty prefer like deep thoughts lately about like how emotional of people bodybuilders like actually are. And, you know, like we all use the gym as like an escape and as a solace and like to really get to that like deep part of you that like, you would never know or like that you can't understand unless you take yourself to that place and so like on one hand if you're writing a song about like your darkest past like you have to understand that part of you to write it but on the same side like if you're doing a bodybuilding show and like you are exhausted 
and like you you literally like have nothing left to give and you just you dig to this whole new place inside of yourself and like to know yourself and so like i find bodybuilding is like can really parallel with that yeah yeah because I mean, only I mean, you are the one like you're the only person that's inside of you that's feeling it yeah and it's the same thing when like growing up with that like person that i felt like i was actually on the inside that like only i knew and i felt so like misunderstood and i never knew how to like share it you know and like be that so yeah yeah i'm i am so excited for you uh to, and also to see what comes of this um on that note uh what can people look forward to seeing and hearing and experiencing with you in the near future Oh, like with music or like with everything? Everything. Oh my God. I do <laughs> okay, like a lot. So a lot. one, okay, I'll just go through like the music. I'll just say with the music first. So sure. I'm really excited. I think I know exactly like which song I want to record first. So I do have my music page, which is I Am Luna Eclipse. Mm -hmm. And um I don't really know what I'm doing. Like, I don't really know what goes into recording an album and like making a music video or like promoting me. Like, luckily, my friend, again, Joey Clarkson, like she's a singer songwriter. I, I've known her since I was four years old and she's really successful and she helps coach people in the music business industry now. So um, we're going to be working together and she's going to help me. So I'm, I would love to be able to even just like put out a single. Um, my goal was to to like have that happen like in 2020 i wanted to write all the songs and finish them all and then in 2021 i want to get like you know a couple songs out so yeah. so that will be happening in the music world um in the bodybuilding world i'm not like i don't know because like who knows what's going to happen this year right but i think um i think i would like to prep i'm currently doing like a little 12-week program which involves mm -hmm. like uh like a maintenance phase and then a dieting phase and a reverse dieting phase. So I've got five and a half weeks left, I think. Yeah, about that. And so it's going well. Um, and so I'm just like using that as some like motivation to keep going while mm -hmm. the shows. But I, I would like to prep for the winter, perhaps. Um, I, like I'm feeling really hopeful that yeah. the shows will happen again. And not just even if I want to get on stage, but I just want to like watch a show again and like so we'll see i think that that would be that would be great um yeah. to be able to do that and i know i have a few clients like with my coaching i have a couple clients that like want to get on stage eventually soon too and i'm like keeping my fingers crossed for them as well because i know like they're first time competitors and they just would love to experience it like at least once so yeah 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 i mean good lord they've had enough time to prep at this point in time. yeah and <laughs> what about alicia is she um going to compete or she wants to badly yes <laughs> oh no god i mean this entire year has been absolute hell on her and like we we've we've done all we could quite frankly we, we had to switch gyms because we had to go to a private gym when our main gym shut down due to restrictions and whatnot again during that entire time like it was a very private hole in the wall gym that had the bare necessities when it came to uh, workout equipment and social distancing there was only like seven people allowed inside this little gym oh. at one point oh it was it was tiny like a two uh, and a half hour wait to get in or something <laughs> Well, no, we, we were lucky. We kept going like early, early, early in the morning. And so we basically had to run out of place the entire time. Um, at one point in time when it was really, really bad, I mean, she, she'd work out at home. Um, like oh, she, would yeah. use, she would use me as weight. <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> like, I so. so I commend her. Like I, I just can't. Like I'll look at the weights and I'll be like, I should pick you up. But I'm not going to. So that's that's good for her for working at home. Yeah. Uh, I, I I as for when I don't know. I do know that the uh, there's a Grand Prairie uh, event that's happening in about 15 weeks. And uh, for me, that's stomping grounds. I mean, I spent two years of my life uh, working in the oil field, but also lived in Grand Prairie. So um, I'm excited to at least know that that's on the way. But yeah. Uh, Time will tell when it comes to uh, what uh, she is going to do and when she gets up on stage. But I know like she's just been itching because, like I said, j j just like you, 
uh, this this year, this lockdown, this COVID thing has just been absolute hell. Yeah, I've just been living vicariously like through all the pro shows that are happening. So at least I can watch bodybuilding online. Yeah, um, yeah. so I, f- I feel it. I feel her. <laughs> Where can people find you on social media? All right. So yeah, my my um, fitness page is Allison Ann Fitness. And my music page is I am Luna Eclipse. And then on my personal page, you'll find a link to my coaching page. So yeah. Physique by Design. Perfect. Yeah. And you mentioned already uh, Luna Eclipse. I am Luna Eclipse. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. All right. All right. Thank That's you, Allison. Good. Yeah, thank you. Just a quick reminder that the Media Jack is on Patreon. If you'd like to support what I do here and maybe even get an opportunity to ask a few questions to future guests, then check me out on Patreon. The link is in the description down below or just go to patreon.com slash themediajack, all one word. As I said before, Red Wolf Dawn was an executive producer and will continue to be an executive producer and get credited for every episode as long as she is willing and I am so grateful that she is to stay at the top tier of my patreon page now without further ado this is october poppy on the flip side podcast i have been performing as october poppy for i don't know i guess about the last three four years but Mm. i think being a musician is kind of a lifetime journey (laughs) how did this journey start then well uh i've been singing for as long as i can remember but i started performing Uh, with my stepdad as a guitarist and as a kid he would learn like Beatles songs and then he'd take me to our local jam night when I was about 11 or 12 and uh, I'd be singing so I mean I've been performing as a vocalist for more than 20 years (laughs) oh wow congratulations yeah I'm old (laughs) (laughs) don't don't start with that (laughs) <laughs> the amount the amount of times I've gotten into conversations is no, I'm really this age, blah 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 blah. It's just it's not even worth it. So, <laughs> yeah. anyway, so uh, what is your uh, instrument of preference? You are a singer, but also you play instruments, right? Yeah, well, I play the guitar. I've dabbled in some things over the years. Um, when I was in high school, I played the bass guitar in band. My stepdad was like, everyone always needs a bass player. <laughs> this is true. <laughs> yeah, I know that now, um, and wish that I'd kept playing it. Mm. But yeah, mainly, like I write songs on the guitar. That is um, my instrument of choice. What is your genre of choice as well? Since you know we're just getting into who you are and what you play. Summing up your own music in a genre, I think, is really hard. Mm. But I would describe what I do as like it's indie pop. It's pretty accessible. It's a little off the mainstream, but uh, that's kind of where I would put myself. Yeah. Now, um, for anyone unfamiliar, uh, you and I have met before, and it was pre-pandemic. You uh, accompanied a, a great group of people into my live radio studio, and I mean, ah. that w- that was an incredible performance. But of course. We, we are currently living in an area and a time where uh, travel and meeting people and shaking hands and uh, attending and being a part of live performances is is up in the air. <laughs> it is a giant question mark. Um, what happened and what was going on in your life when everything shut down around you? When everything shut down, I actually was planning the release party for my last single that I released, (laughs) Bones, which actually I think is the song that I played when I came to visit you in the studio. Yeah. And we had uh, some shows on the island and the coast that we had to cancel and just sort of stay in place and everything kind of very quickly came to a standstill. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, like, I, I... Something else that um, uh, you you shared with me uh, a little while ago is um, I'm not the only person in this conversation that has a history in radio. You are also a radio personality. Yeah. Feels like a lifetime ago, but yeah. It does, doesn't it? (laughs) My goodness. It's such a long time ago. So um, 
like you you know what was going on and dealing with the sudden changes and the constant influx of information and and different rules and whatnot at the same time like you're a musician and it is your dream and your livelihood to be out and about and and perform i mean like what it just i know i've told my story uh of of everything that's gone on and you know how my station dealt you live in the same province as me british columbia right yeah yeah so um i like i just i just got to like i just i'm curious uh, of like what what happened how did things change for you um in a professional standing and a personal standing if you don't mind yeah no of course um so for me like i i grew up in the okanagan i lived down in vancouver a pretty long time and then when i started to kind of pursue making music and art for a living i moved back home to the okanagan right and so i've been here now for about three years and I really designed my life to be around art and so like I play music and I tour and we play the shows but I'm also a silversmith and I do markets and I sell jewelry and so I I also have like a job too but um I like all of those things that I've been chasing and pursuing my passions all got canceled yeah and so I actually one a friend of mine who's a full-time touring musician he summed it up that like it's been an identity crisis that's really what it is because you know you you design your life this way to be around this thing so you can do the thing and then just every part of it got canceled yeah. overnight yeah and like what what do i do now <laughs> have you taken this opportunity uh to like i, I don't want to be all doom and gloom the entire time but have you taken this opportunity to uh, get creative and to hone uh, your craft and your art and your passion for music? I uh, I have done some of that. I think, you know, there were some low points at uh, things where motivation was harder to find. But for me, kind of the silver lining through all of it is my um, younger sister. Mm -hmm. uh, she's been going to Evic. She's a piano player. And um, she came home. And so we ended up living in this house together with our jam space in the basement. And uh, we, I, I also did this really very classic rock and roll faux pas. And I dated the bass player of my band. <laughs> and we broke up. Oh, no. In COVID. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah. But oh. it was, again, the silver lining. Yes. That I replaced the bass with keys. And uh, so she plays the bass part, she plays the lead lines, mm -hmm. and we have that like good sister harmonies going on. So Oops. that was really nice. We were here in the same house and while you know nobody was going out and doing things, we had each other to kind of work on that with. So that was, it was awesome actually. Well, I mean, you know, there, there was, there was a lot of hope for 2020 and uh, there was like a lot of positivity at the very beginning of the year of like, this will be the year <laughs> of change and this will be the year where things are going to happen. And, you know, people had no idea how they were right. Uh, but it, it really, it really comes down to though, is that um, like someone, someone said that it wasn't a year that we expected, but it was most likely a year that we all needed. It gave us all an opportunity to stop being so busy. It forced us, unfortunately, but it forced us to center ourselves and to stop moving around and to focus inward. And for a lot of people, that was like devastating, but it forced us to slow down and reassess. And a lot of, a lot of positive change came from it. Not, not all of it was positive, but a lot of it was. And like you know the relationship unfortunately ended for you and the bass player but you <laughs> had had grown because of it and you got a stronger connection with your sister and an opportunity to work with your sister and also to you know go a different avenue and different route with your music so like 
you know, you're right. It's silver lining. It was a blessing uh, and a, a very unfortunate and scary year, but still it was a blessing. Yeah. Yeah. There's definitely even, you know, I had a lot of big changes happen in my personal life and like all of those things as difficult as they were, were good things. Like they all needed to happen and yeah. the result ended up being like exactly what I needed in my life. So yeah, it was, uh, it's been an interesting like past year and a half, but you know, yeah. Re reimagining, <laughs> re reimagining, reassessing, reinventing, it, as it were. Yeah, yeah. So uh, last year, uh, it was supposed to be a release party for the uh, the single Bones, um, and yes, you you did perform it live in studio. A beautiful song, by the way. Um, Thank you. And then you have been hard at work, and you sent me a brand new single, which I will be including right quick here um tell me about it please yeah so the song is actually i wrote it uh actually about two years ago it was the the first like full year that i had spent here doing this art thing full time which was terrifying and um the the song is really about that you know there's this idea that when you make art full time or you chase your dreams that it's like so fulfilling and it's so wonderful and it's magical <laughs> and what i actually found was you know i gave up a life that i really enjoyed in the city a lot of friends and a lot of really good things because i wanted to do this thing that was you know a big big part of who i am right but there's there's a lot of pressure in that too when you go full time with the thing that you love with your passion is that you know like what if you don't succeed and you kind of feel like you have to succeed and so i put everything behind that and um i was feeling really overwhelmed and everyone had an opinion like oh well you have to do this to be successful you have to do this you have to do it like this and that can be a lot when you know, you're the one who's in it. And I kind of felt like everyone around me was moving with their life and things were happening and they were making plans and they were doing things. And I was kind of just had this one thing and it was really isolating actually. Hmm. And what I think is really interesting with the timing with releasing it is that like through the recording process, I think I realized that the song was really about feeling isolated, very isolated. And how fitting for the last year that we've had and that I think everybody went through that feeling of uh, isolation. No kidding. What's the song title? It's called Butterflies. Stay. 
will butterflies uh, be uh, a part of a album or is it already a part of an album? All right, so what we've been working on is an EP. I'm also very lucky. I have a friend here close to where I live who is building a studio in his garage. And so um, through the quarantine, we were able to work on that in that studio. And so, yeah, Butterflies is the very first single. There's going to be five songs. Okay, cool. Uh, have you already gotten the other songs written or is this still all just a giant work in progress? It's, it's kind of interesting because the project started as like there were some older songs and I just wanted to record. It was just going to be really simple, just me and the guitar and just to kind of have a record of some of these songs that I don't really play anymore. Yeah. And then the more we started working on it and my sister moved back and we were like, oh, we can add all these other elements like adding keys is sort of endless with the sounds you can use with that. So then it kind of grew and so there are five songs a couple of them are a little bit older and then uh, one of them is actually one of the newest songs that i've written about my breakup that i went through <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm guessing there's no bass guitar in this song <laughs> <laughs> no <laughs> With with everything that's going on right now, and and we have COVID and whatever, but I mean things are are, are are opening up and vaccinations and all that stuff. Blah blah blah. What is your recording situation like? Do you have a home studio or are you going to a actual recording studio? I, I don't have a home studio. That like the mixing and the computer stuff is not really in my jam. But right, um, I've been really lucky. So like the first two singles that I recorded, Howl and Bones, my drummer got really into that audio engineering stuff. So he has a setup in his basement and that's where we did that. And then with this new stuff, it's yeah, a friend of mine's garage just down the highway a little bit. Mm. So yeah, like people that are in my small little bubble and they have a setup at home and I've been able to utilize that. I'm really grateful. Well, that's good. Uh, yeah. What about your silversmithing? Um, like, uh, uh, you know, understandably you can't be uh, on the, in the market or anything like that, but you have to follow social distancing rules and whatever. Are, are you still able to do that? Have you still been able to create? Yeah, so I have um, a little studio in my house. I do have a website and so I do some selling online. And actually, I got to do my very first market since like December 2019. Oh, wow. Um, last weekend. And so I was. it was an outdoor market. It was you know, like people were distance out and there were masks, but it was so nice to be able to be out there and talk to people and do that again. That must have been refreshing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, like it rained half the day, but everybody had tents, so it didn't even matter. I didn't care. <laughs> I, I would stand out in the rain if I had an opportunity to at this point in time. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, things you know going to the market that's a lot of fun and being out there even though rain i mean like i said i'll take it but you know it's it's looking hopeful right now and also like it's looking like maybe there's an opportunity for you to actually get out and perform and tour again sometime soon yeah i we're actually kind of starting to make plans for that so um, for Butterflies, which is out on the 24th, it'll be live on all your streaming platforms with the full moon. <laughs> Perfect. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, and then the weekend following, the Saturday following, I live, we call our house the Art Farm. It's this like big old farmhouse and I have a massive yard. And so we're actually doing like a backyard show. Mm hmm which is very exciting yeah. because um, we are now allowed to have outdoor gatherings up to 50 people. Awesome. Um, yeah, so we got to cap it there. But uh, yeah, and then towards the end of the summer, right now we're working on trying to piece together a little island tour for when my sister moves back from university to Victoria. Uh, and then, yeah, I'm really, really hopeful that for the fall I'm going to start kind of looking around and moving around again and – Probably go through BC and Alberta. Mm. Well, if you make your way up here, you know exactly where I work. I will. <laughs> <laughs> so where can people find you on social media and online? 
On social media, I am on Instagram at October.poppy. I'm also, I have a Facebook page, um, but those are probably the best places to find me. Or on TikTok at October Poppy. I'm, I jumped on the TikTok train. That's actually been a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> it, it is. And for someone with an artistic background and a musician, it, it can be very, very creative. Yeah, it's awesome. And then uh, you can find me on Spotify, Apple Music, anywhere that you stream music, October Poppy. There's a couple of singles out there. And then on the 24th, Butterflies will join the lineup, which I'm very excited about. Yeah. Just for the record, that'd be today. Yeah. That's <laughs> awesome. Today's the day. Go listen to it. <laughs> Thanks, October. 